In this video, we're going to look at starch, glycogen and cellulose. Those are the storage and structural polysaccharides. This video relates to AS AQA Biology Unit 2, and we're going to be looking at the AQA AS textbook by Glenn and Susan Toole, and you're going to want to look at page 156 to 157. Let's look at our objectives. Firstly, we're going to want to review Unit 1 carbohydrates. Then, we're going to be able to describe the structure of starch, glycogen and cellulose. And finally, we're going to explain how the structure of starch, glycogen and cellulose relates to their biological function. Let's get started. So, before we get any further, you're going to want to review your Unit 1 carbohydrates notes. All of the stuff on monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides, hydrolysis reactions and condensation reactions are all really key to this area of study. So either go over your notes from your file or from your textbook, or you can use one of these websites. What you want to do is download a QR code reading app for your smartphone, so something like Red Laser will be really good, and scan one of these QR codes. If you don't have a smartphone, you can just search in Google for SCOOL Carbohydrates Revision or mrobbery.co.uk Carbohydrates Revision. This is really, really important. At A-level, you can't just forget the stuff from Unit 1. We're building on it all the time. Okay, let's get started with starch. So starch is a polysaccharide that's used for medium-term storage in plants. It's never found in animals. Now, what I mean by medium-term storage is it's not going to be used up straight away and it's not going to be stored forever, but at some point, if the plant requires it, it needs to be able to be broken down into alpha glucose that can be used. So, uh, this is found in seeds and tubers. So seeds, you know what seeds are. Uh, tubers you might not be aware of. These are underground storage organs. Uh, things like potatoes are tubers, so that's the underground storage organ of the potato plant. And a bit of biochemistry here. Iodine will turn blue-black in the presence of starch. If there's no starch present in a sample, your iodine is going to remain that orangey-brown colour. So let's look at the structure of starch. Here's a picture. It's formed from the multiple condensation reactions of alpha glucose. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six alpha glucose molecules that have condensed together to form a little bit of starch. Extra points if you can tell me how many H2O molecules, water molecules, were formed. Remember, it's the number of monomers minus one. So that's five. So we have an unbranched region. Now obviously this is a very small section of starch. Starch is this huge, huge molecule. Now that unbranched region doesn't, isn't just left as a chain. It's wound up into a really tight helix. And that's really important as we'll see later. So why is it useful? Starch isn't soluble, so it's insoluble. And that means that it doesn't affect the water potential of the cell. If it was soluble and it was present in cells, it would reduce the water potential, making it more negative, which means loads of water would be drawn in via osmosis. That's bad because it can lead to osmotic lysis and breaking of the cell. It also doesn't easily diffuse out of the cell, so it's wherever it's going to be formed, well, that's where it's going to stay, and that's useful. Remember what we said about the helix of the uh, un un unbranched region? Um, that makes it compact, which means loads of, loads of starch can be stored in a very small space. When you break starch down, when you hydrolyze it, you form alpha glucose, and that's really easy to transport. And it's also used for respiration, which is great. So let's move on and look at glycogen. Glycogen is the medium-term storage polysaccharide for animals. It's never found in plants. Sometimes, some people will call glycogen animal starch, because it does pretty much the same job. Now, if you look at the structure of glycogen, it's very similar to starch. It's got branched regions and straight regions. Now, the thing about glycogen is chains are much shorter, and it's much more branched. And we'll come across why that's useful in a minute. When it's more branched and shorter chains, that means there's more ends. So each chain has an end, and each one of those ends is where an enzyme can come along and break down the glycogen and, and break off an alpha glucose, which means it's really easy to hydrolyze it. It's more readily hydrolyzed than starch. Let's move on to cellulose. 
Cellulose is completely different from glycogen and starch. It's structural. It's a structural polysaccharide. It's found in plants. So structural meaning it's not storing anything. It's just purely based on structure. It's, it's building the physical part of the plant. It's formed by hydrolysis of beta glucose rather than alpha glucose. So in the picture, we can see the difference. Remember when we drew alpha glucose, we remembered how to draw it by the location of the OH groups. Starting at carbon 6, the top left, the OH groups on alpha glucose went up, down, up, down, down, if we go around anti-clockwise. Now, if we go around anti-clockwise from carbon 6 on beta glucose, we see the OH groups go up, down, up, down, up. And that's the difference. At carbon 1, the OH group and the hydrogen are switched. So in order to form a straight chain, each monomer is going to need to rotate 180 degrees. If we look at this diagram at the bottom, by following where the CH2OH groups are, we can see that each monomer along has, has rotated 180 degrees. So the first one, the CH2OH at the bottom, next one's at the top, next one's at the bottom, next at the top, bottom, top, and so on. So cellulose has straight unbranched chains with hydrogen bonds cross-linking the adjacent chains. And this forms these structures called microfibrils. Now, hydrogen bonds on their own, they're relatively weak. But a load of them together makes cellulose really, really strong. Now, I like to think of cellulose as kind of like toddlers. If you were being attacked by one toddler, it wouldn't be a problem. But lots of toddlers together, you're going to be overwhelmed and on the floor pretty quickly. That might help, it might not. It's up to you. So why is cellulose useful? The cross-linked chains add strength, and it's difficult to hydrolyze. Let's summarize this. Starch and glycogen are both storage polysaccharides made of alpha-glucose monomers. Starch is found in plants. Glycogen is found in animals. Starch and glycogen are insoluble, compact, and easily, hy easily hydrolyzed. Cellulose is a structural polysaccharide made of beta-glucose monomers. And cellulose forms microfibrils, which are strong due to many hydrogen bonds. And that's everything. This is quite a short topic. Thanks for watching.